Randy, did you go? And then Richard. Well, I, I think that uh, you know, th this isn't you know, an issue that you know, is inside baseball, so that's fascinated people. Um, this is an issue more fundamental about uh, our local democracy and um, how we elect local elected officials and when we include voters in the, the process of deciding how to change our electoral system. The reality is that while there may have been occasions like major budget shortfall, so they pass you know, a, a measure quickly to address a major budget shortfall which included a tax increase, there has never been such a fundamental charter change that so fundamentally alters our electoral process as this one passed in two weeks by the city council. And yes, there are circumstances in which the charter can be changed by legislation and circumstances where it can be changed by the voters. The voters twice ratified term limits. You know, in, in all good conscience, this is an issue that having been put to the voters twice and the voters having had their say, responsible public officials, with all due respect, should be giving the voters their say again, and there's plenty of time to do that. I have to say, the notion that uh, proposed here that it is somehow less democratic to leave it to the 51 council members, the vast majority of whom are term limited out of office if this doesn't change, that they have to do this in two weeks, should be as offensive to all of you as it is to me as a proposition. Let's be honest about it. The reason why the mayor and the council don't want to put the question to the voters is because the voters twice ratified term limits, the mayor polled it, the council has polled it, and they know that term limits are enormously popular. That doesn't mean, for all the reasons that have been expressed, that the voters might not have a different view when it's put to them this time. But what we have, unfortunately, here, and this is why people of good conscience are so outraged by what's going on here, what we have here is that our own elected officials don't trust the voters to decide. They don't believe that the voters will necessarily do the right thing, so they're taking the decision upon themselves. And that's what is wrong. Now, there are people of good faith who, who believe this strongly that it should be done by legislation. I'm not suggesting that there are none, but I am suggesting that as a fundamental proposition, an issue twice decided by the voters where there's time to put it to the voters, it so fundamentally alters our democratic process, that is what is causing good government groups, not politicians, Lou, good government groups to speak up. Now our editorial boards haven't because as one newspaper revealed, the mayor lobbied his billionaire friends to have their editorial boards you know, uh, come out in favor of a legislative change. Um, but the reality is that good government groups, and many of us who have no agenda, I'm not in politics, I never will be in politics. But it's why so many of us who care about New York City, who come out of New York City government, who care about the future of this city, believe that this is such a fundamentally important issue that it be decided by the voters. It's not even that we necessarily have a strong view about whether term limits are a good or a bad thing, or about whether they should be changed under these unique circumstances. It's about our respect for democracy and the right of the voters to make this decision. And that's why we care so passionately about it. Our city will be cheapened and worsened by this act of legislation. As, as Councilwoman Rea herself said publicly, the legitimacy of the change by legislation would be, quote, undermined without public input. Um, now, uh, and she is concerned that how could the council do this? And it will make the council a punching bag for the public. She is right when she said that publicly. And the reality is that you know, our elected officials should have more respect for the people who voted them into office. And as everybody up here knows, incumbency is a huge electoral advantage, as the professor can confirm for us, because I've looked at these statistics. You can count on one hand over the last 20 years the number of incumbent city council members who, when they stood for re-election, weren't re-elected and not use all the fingers on that hand. 
It's 98 to 99 percent reelected. I, I think, uh, I don't know, Richard, if you had something to add or to the councilwoman. I, thank you, Richard. I just wanted to just correct Randy because he had mentioned that there was a poll in the city council, and that is not true. The poll was, an, to my knowledge, and this was hearsay amongst us, the speaker had an independent poll that I'm was I'm sorry, it was the speaker. I stand corrected. I meant that the leadership of the city council had also done a poll as the mayor had done a poll. And having said that, you know, I, I just want to point out that this particular issue on term limits, you can also agree that it's a class issue. This is why it's such a sexy topic to speak about. Um, you know, the numbers as we had regurgitated them, you know, you're talking about a few deciding on term limits and the economics behind uh, supporting the act of term limits and whether or not there should be an extension, being supported and given permission by editorial boards, uh, being given permission by the billionaires, being given permission, and then everybody else comes second to that. You know, I find that just as insulting and undemocratic as to whether or not there should be an extension. Um, what Randy didn't continue to read off of that statement as he had quoted me is that the deadline had been exhausted purposely, purposely. And now we have to make a decision as the people had elected us because that is what is being proposed right now. And I favor a le legislative action, not because I'm choosing to vote for myself, the people vote for the elected office candidate, but because that is what the city charter allows us by law, by law. I'm not trying to circumvent anything, but I can assure you that the people will have their say next year in September and November. And so there's many special interests one way or another, but now it lies amongst 51 people. And that is why this is such a heavy handed issue because 51 people are going to be responsible for an action that perhaps has been unprecedented. I think I'm gonna to move to the next question and if you have comments you wanna make, you could just insert them. <laughs> with it, with it I just to ask Diana one question, because I have great respect for Diana, but she's now said this twice. At the same time there's a bill to amend term limits by legislation, there's also a bill pending in the city council for the city council to use its authority to appoint a charter commission and put on the ballot by early next year this very question, so it would go on the ballot. So, Diana, please understand, you have that option available to you too. You could put it on the ballot, and it could be on the ballot by early next year. You don't have to vote yay or nay on amending term limits because one of the two legislative proposals before you says that. There is also a proposal before you right now, one that you know, hopefully will win a majority of the council's support, to have a charter commission put the question on the ballot for the voters and that could be done by early next year, and that's what both state law and local law permit, a special election for those purposes. The mayor could still do that if he wanted to. I, and he's not. Uh, but why aren't you? And he's gonna veto, veto the proposal that's being introduced. No, and so uh, where are oh, we? Oh, the mayor will, if that were the one passed by the council, there is no the way he man, could veto the that. The same man that purposely let the deadline pass